In the study of blood types, Rh factor is also called rhesus factor because it was first discovered in the blood of rhesus monkeys. There are 612 primate species and subspecies recognized by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, the IUCN, and not one has Rh negative blood. If mankind evolved from the same African ancestor, their blood would be compatible, but it's not. Nearly 85% of all human beings have Rh positive blood, yet all royal families have Rh negative blood. Where did the Rh negatives come from? Why does the body of an Rh negative mother carrying an Rh positive child reject her own offspring? I received an, an email from a person who wants to remain anonymous and this is what he said to me. He is a geneticist, a full-blown geneticist. And he says, Dear Mr. Pai, I agree with your conclusions and will give you a few hints, if you wish, as a DNA deep throat. First, look up the huge discontinuities between man and the various apes for whole mitochondrial DNA, genes for the Rh factor, and human Y chromosomes, among others. Regarding number three, the chromosomes, I refer you to K.D. Smith's 1987 study titled Repeated DNA Sequences of the Human Y Chromosome. It says most human Y chromosome sequences so far examined do not have homologs, which are similar sequences, on the Y chromosomes of other primates. Human female DNA does look somewhat ape-like, but not the male Y. This means that if we are a crossbred hybrid species, as you contend, meaning me, the cross had to be between a female ape-like creature, a creature of the earth, as the Sumerian said, and a male person from elsewhere, as I also contend. He goes on to say, what the evolutionists do is find certain genes which look very similar between man and ape, then they make a tree of descent while ignoring those huge impassable abysses of difference elsewhere. Also, by certain methods of DNA dating, one can tell that numerous genes have been recently added to the human genome. If workers in my field were to say such things openly, we would be ostracized, as I also contend and forced to live in a tent. Any work along these lines would be rejected without any form of appeal. So what can we do? Sincerely, DNA Deep Throat. RH negative genes are frequent in Europe infrequent in Africa and West Asia, and virtually absent in East Asia and among the Aboriginal populations of Australia. By looking at Rh negative blood type frequencies in different population demographics, it might become possible to identify a geographic origin. On a national level, Australia tops the percentage of Rh negatives with 19%. Among some of the blonde tribes still living in the Atlas Mountains of Morocco, called Berbers, that percentage is doubled to 40%. Now keep in mind, it's restricted to certain local tribes in Morocco. Another group with legitimate claims of the highest Rh negative blood are the Basque of the Pyrenees Mountains, reported in different publications as having up to 32%, depending on location. The people of Northwest Ireland, and the Western Islands of Norway all have between 16 and 25 percent, while the Laps of Norway and Finland have around 7 percent. The frequency of Rh negatives in Scotland varies between the low number of 10 percent on the Moray Coast to 30 percent Rh negatives in the Inverness regions of the West Coast. That said, there are many populations of Jewish people, such as the Jews of Iraq, which also rank amongst the densest Rh negative tribes in the world. Comprehensive studies of blood types in the Americas show that the Mayans, Incas, and natives of Chile have had 5 to 20 percent of the population being Rh negative. So what about other hominin pre-modern human genomes that have been sequenced 
Do we know the blood type, for example, of Neanderthal? The answer is yes, we do know. And no, Neanderthal is not Rh negative. Not only that, the Neanderthal specimen tested was not even a recessive carrier of the gene, which makes sense because East Asians have a much higher degree of Neanderthal genetics than Europeans, for example, and virtually no incidence of Rh negatives in their population, compared to Europeans, which have a very high degree. Rh negative blood arises in Cro-Magnon first, at the same time as domesticated animals show up, bow and arrows in the archaeological record, clothing, and many other attributes of civilization, including agriculture, which did not spontaneously pop up in different regions, but was spread or diffused by this same Cro-Magnon type people, which can help to explain why all royal families are of this haplotype. The term white supremacy is often attributed to a racist emotion or attitude by the media, but to an anthropologist, there is no civilization without agriculture, which allows for massive populations, um, armies, etc. And domesticated animals were a key reason for how agricultural civilization came about. For those of you that are not very anthropologically inclined, the biblical version of what I'm talking about is best explained in the Noah story, where Noah, having survived the rapidly melting glaciers and cataclysms at the end of the Ice Age, retained domesticated animals in Anatolia, such as horses and oxen, in his boat, spreading out during the Holocene from modern Turkey, where Mount Ararat is. So both the Greeks and the Medes come from the Indo-European family. The Indo-Europeans stretch from the Indus River in northern India to the Black Sea, and eventually all the way to Ireland. They represent one of the three Caucasian groups. Traditionally, it was taught that there were three Caucasian groups, the first being the Hamite Caucasians, who became known as the Egyptians, the second being the Semite Caucasians, who became known as the Babylonians, Hebrews, Elamites and Assyrians, and the third being the great Indo-Europeans, or Japhites, also known as the Aryans, which included Northern Indians, Greeks, Medes, Latins, Celts, Germanic races, Slavs and Russians, also known as Scythians. This was taught in schools, universities, and even in church. It's really in the last 150 years that we've seen a major change in the biblical story at the hands of globalization. We then have Noah's Ark landing on the Caucasian mountain on Mount Ararat. Noah's three sons and their sons dispersed in different directions from this point. So the old church tradition was that Noah and his sons were the white races. So Noah's sons and grandsons divided and eventually mixed with other people. And so Noah's sons represent the three Caucasian groups. Now, today, the churches teach the whole world was submerged under water and that only eight people survived. Therefore, we are all the product of serious incest, and somehow Noah and his wife gave birth to one pure African son, one pure white son, and one pure Asian son, and we're all somehow related. However, all DNA, all archaeology, linguistics, and even our modern world testifies that exactly where Noah's Ark landed is the exact starting point for the white race. But of course, this view is racist and the modern day church view is more multicultural and therefore it's accepted. The Great Events from Great Historians, a collection from 1905, makes no apologies that Noah and his sons represent the three Caucasian groups. So this was a normal view in white Western Christian nations. Noah and his sons were Caucasian, hence why we call the mountains where Noah landed the Caucasian Mountains. The first three major empires after the flood were the Hittites in Anatolia, Egypt or Mizra, who comes from Ham's son Mizraim, and the Semites from Shem, who ruled Mesopotamia after a Semite named Sargon of Akkad conquered Mesopotamia. 
These kingdoms are recorded in secular history, and the Bible fully backs this up. So the Aryans or Indo-Europeans represent the Japhites, and in Greek mythology, two of the main gods who gave birth to all the gods were Gaia and Uranus, and they gave birth to a god named Iapetus, or Japetus, who is also known as Japheth. He is one of the fathers of the Greeks. The Bible calls the Greeks Javan, who was a son of Japheth. If you go to your Bible concordance, you will see that under Javan, it says Ionian Greek. When we look at language from India to Ireland, we see connections just through the words. In Sanskrit, which is Old Indo-Aryan and is the base for the Indian language today, we see similarities when we compare it with Old Persian, Latin, Greek, and even Gaelic. We see some serious connections. From Sanskrit to Old Persian, it's almost identical. Look at the words father, mother, and brother. Even when we compare it to German and English, even when we look at Gaelic, Greek, and Latin, we can see the Aryan roots. So even after thousands of years, we can still see similarities in the languages. Now the first name of the Aryans country was called Arata. It was in the mountains somewhere near Iran and Armenia, like the mountain Ararat, Arata, where the Bible says Noah's Ark landed and became the name Arya, Aryan, which in Sanskrit, Arya means noble or noble ones. Also, monotheism was apparently common among Aryans who eventually invented Zoroastrianism. Now, Noah wasn't Jewish or Israeli or a Hebrew or a Semite. He was the father of all of them. The Bible tells us that the Phoenicians and the Israelites had trade posts with Javan or the Ionian Greeks and even Tarshish, which is in Spain. We know that they established the great city of Carthage who conquered Spain which Spain's original name was Iberia, which meant Hebrew. So it was originally called the Hebrew Peninsula. The Phoenicians had trade posts as far as Britain, Denmark, and potentially even the New World. The island in the middle of the Mediterranean bears the Hebrew words Sardania, which means rulers of Dan in Hebrew. The tribe of Dan were Viking-like people who had a habit of conquering lands and then renaming it after the father of their tribe, Dan. Elisha was the son of Javan, the fourth son of Noah's son, Japheth, according to the book of Genesis. The Jewish historian Josephus related the descendants of Elisha with the Elonians, one of the ancestral branches of the Greeks, or the ancestor of the Almanim. Alemannic German from the territory of Alemannia, which includes the Swabia region of Germany, is also called High German, another form being Yiddish, the historical language of the Ashkenazi Jews, a High German-based vernacular fused with elements taken from Hebrew and Aramaic. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist. Thank you for sharing, liking, subscribing, and especially to those who donated to Atlantean Gardens, the nonprofit organization that I contribute these videos to. I always look forward to reading your comments. Even though I don't always get a chance to reply, I do appreciate them. I will see you next time.